because I believe in entrepreneurship so much. You know, I love this country. And in this country, when it got started, what happened to 90% of people were entrepreneurs. Mm. 10% work for somebody. Today is the exact opposite. Mm. 10% are entrepreneurs, 90% work for them. Mm. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Blue Collar Boardroom. Today we have a freaking jam-packed episode. I've got one of my uh, friends from the Arte Brotherhood, Ed Milet's right-hand man. Uh, I'll tell you about the first time I met this guy. Uh, Ed was talking at an event. You were uh, asking a real, like, literal question about something, and he, he started saying, come on, man. And I was like, who is this guy? And then I started paying attention, and, you know, when I, once I dug around the surface, realized that you are associate producer of this Think and Grow Rich book, big fan of Napoleon Hill, kind of got me, you know, really interested in your movement at Wealth Builders. And um, me and Cash started a conversation in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. Um, oh, yeah. We were at a, 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 a mastermind and uh, we had a few drinks and, and, and that conversation, it, it led to some life-changing financial decisions for me. And so um, as a contractor, you know, my whole life, I was taught to make it rain like a hurricane, you know, not just make the money, but spend it. You know, the blue collar American dream is about nice houses, nice cars, boats, toys. And a lot of my friends and family and people in this audience, you know, they've made a lot of money. But it's really about uh, my purpose in life. And what I'm most passionate about is helping blue collar entrepreneurs build wealth, true freedom. And, you know, break out of the ruling class, you know, whether that's the banks, insurance companies or financial institutions that that don't give blue collar entrepreneurs access to capital. You can go get a loan to go to college because they know you're going to go into debt, but they won't give you a loan. Uh, it's really hard to get a loan to build your business, to build a contracting business. You know, and, and that's really the funny thing about life is that, uh, you know, a lot of contractors and working class people don't have financial education. That's why I thought whenever we Mm, met that day, that your mission to provide, uh, you know, financial education. And look, guys, I thought, you know, obviously knowing that you need to save money is one thing, but uh, building wealth and creating enough income from your investments so that you can be retired and passively make all the money you need to live, thrive and survive. And so my man, Cash, um, you've obviously done some good things in your life and uh, I want to hear a little bit about how you got here, man. Where, where'd you come from? And welcome so, to the boardroom. So first thing first, I heard that if I actually punch you in the face right now, we'll, our rating goes up. Yes, so. dude, it does. They love to see, they love so, to see it, man. So, so you want to punch me in the face. Yeah, exactly. I love you, bro. No, that's it. That's it. They uh, love it whenever uh, the, the, they tell me no at the door. Uh, contractors, you know, don't worry. This guy flew on Ed uh, Milet's private jet to our, our recent mastermind. We're going to give you insight on what Ed told him <laughs> that uh, is going to change your life. But uh, most importantly, you got 600 salespeople in your organization. Yeah, yeah. You're a multimillionaire. You, you have a constant system of new people coming in. You're a master of running a sales team through mm-hmm. Zoom. And my contractors can learn how you've duplicated because you've got time, you've got true freedom, and you got the American dream. And guys, pay attention because um, this wasn't just given to you. Mm-hmm. And and the truth of it is, see, I grew up very shy. I was the shy kid, and I was the kid everybody made fun of. Mm. Okay, so I was I was that kid that would throw my backpack around. So I just want you to know where I come from. Mm-hmm. And and I grew up in Iran, and I came here in 1999. I didn't speak a word of English, so my first job was working in a car wash, vacuuming cars. Then I worked in Subway washing dishes. So that's how I started. And I thought you come to America, it's like you just street is paved with gold, right? And then I end up working in a car wash, you know? And but you know, everybody said if you want to become successful, you gotta go get a job and get a degree. Which is not the case. They say that the worst thing an entrepreneur could do is to take advice from successful employees. See, I had a lot of successful employees that told me what to do. They say go to school, get a good degree. So I went, I learned English, I went to school, I went to USC and I became an engineer. I started working as an engineer for a couple of years, loved my job, but I hated having a job. I hated having a boss, limited income. This is not why we came here. I'm driving on PCH in California. There are millions of houses, over 5 million bucks. I don't know if you ever wanted to do this, Lee. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to knock on their door. Be like, excuse me, what do you do? I wanna do what you do. Screw passion, I wanna do what you do. Right. 
I found that most of them had their own businesses, quite honestly. So I said, you know what? I got to start a business. Now, keep it, I, I didn't know jack about business. So I thought the way you start a business is you go back to school and get an MBA degree. Oh, nice. Okay, so I go back to school to get my MBA degree. I get to know a couple of my professors and I found out they themselves didn't have a business. Mm. So I was like, if these guys know how to have a business, they'll be starting one, right? Not teaching it for a hundred grand a year. Nice. <laughs> so I dropped out. I met two people by a vending machine and they're talking to each other about some class about money. Now I have no clue how money works. Didn't know what a stock was. Didn't know what credit was. You know, where I come from, none of this stuff even exists. You buy a house, you buy cash. The financial system is completely different. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what? If I want to start a business, I need to know how money works. By the way, isn't it crazy? Everybody wants to become financially independent, but they don't want to learn the, the rules of the game. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know, it's in crazy US, that, that I ignored some of these rules that you've taught me. And it's like, pfft, what have I been doing? You know, in US, there's only five states that require financial education. Mm -hmm. 45 states require sex education mm -hmm. in the United States. Five require financial education. Mm -hmm. So most people never <laughs> learn about how to handle money, how to become financially independent. And the system is designed that way, by the way, because the, the greatest slavery is to keep people in debt mm -hmm. because they don't even know they're slaves. It, it's true and it's, 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 true. it's crazy. You know, one of my um, favorite uh, quote of all time is with Harriet, uh, is Harriet Tubman, mm -hmm. right? So he, she said that when she was trying to go free slaves, she would go that, to the South and try to free the slaves. And she said that I would have freed a lot more slaves if they knew they were slaves. Mm. You know, and, and they say, look, there, there's the financial slavery that's happening in the U.S. right now. This whole thing of eight to five thing, having a job, really not having a life, being in debt. Cost of everything going up through the roof. All the money Real being printed. Real estate going in the roof. 22% uh, of the money printed in the last year. Crazy. So that's really the ultimate slavery because you don't even know that you're in it. Mm -hmm. I mean... Think about this, people graduate college right now and they get a degree that's just worth really nothing <laughs> at the end of it. So, so tell me a little bit about how you were able to go from the no first, financial background. The first to thing that happened is mm -hmm. me being Persian, so we're all about the looks, okay? Mm -hmm. So like, and I'm from Orange County. In Orange County, everybody's about the looks, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm an engineer, I'm making 65 grand a year. The car that I'm driving, because all my friends are Persian, they're all driving nice cars. So I bought this Audi A6 fully loaded, and I think I'm so cool, $60,000 car, and I'm paying a thousand bucks a month, and I'm like, this is awesome. So I go until I go to the seminar, start learning about money, and this guy comes in and says, Cash, become a mentor of mine. He says, how much are you paying for that car? And I told him how much I was paying. And he says, Cash, did you know that if you take that thousand dollars that you're paying for your car, and if you invest that, 30 years down the road, that's gonna be about 1.7 million. And I'm like, what? Are you telling me this car is costing me one and a half, 1.7 million? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, man, I hate this car. So I got rid of the car and I started investing. I started investing a thousand bucks a month. Then I learned how to be an entrepreneur. Came, came in the business, started learning from my mentors how to build the financial services industry, which I had really no passion for, by the way just so you know, like, mm -hmm. cause I remember I was talking to my mentor. I said, look, I love learning about finances, but I don't want to build a financial, I, I mean, this is, not, this is my, not my passion. You know what happened? He started laughing at me. He's like, I'm like, why are you laughing? He's like, Cash, do you think the guy who has 10 McDonald's has a passion about selling hamburgers? <laughs> right. He's like, I'm like, no. He's like, the financial stuff is the hamburger. It just happens to be that pays the most money. Just go any downtown, look up, you're gonna see a financial company because there's money in money. So if you can choose to sell burger or whatever else, why would you not do it in financial? So I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Who so, told you that? So at, at first I heard it from a mentor of mine, Sean. Yeah. Uh, his mentor is Ed. And uh, so I, I basically heard it from them. And, nice. and I was like, wow, that, uh, that makes sense. So I was like, okay. Because at the time I was looking to start a business 
we had a land in Iran. I was going to go sell the lands, buy a business. So I went to Quiznos, Subway to buy one. Oh, you're going to buy it? Yeah, McDonald's gas station, mortgage companies. I went to insurance companies like um, farmers. Uh, I went to multi-level marketing company. Anybody who invited me to anything, I'm like, all right, I'm coming. As long <laughs> as there's an opportunity, I had a 100% open mind. Right. And early on, by the way, somebody told me that whatever everybody else is doing, as long as you do the opposite, you'll be good. So I was very open-minded. So anybody who ever told me about a business, I was like, okay, I'm in. And just to look at it, and then I, once I get, got this financial stuff, I started, uh, I got rid of that car. I bought a Toyota, 1997 Toyota Corolla, 3,500 bucks a month. I mean, not a month, 3,500 bucks was the price of the car. I started driving that car and I got to the point where at the time I was saving 20,000 a month. I was still driving that car. I was investing, not saving. Saving is not wise. Investing is wise, okay? So... And people would tell me, Cash, if you're making so much money, why are you driving this car? I'm like, okay, let me show you. I pull up my bank account. To this day, I do that. I pull up and I'm like, look, look how much I'm putting every month aside. And I'm investing. And they'll be like, okay. And these are guys that have these beautiful houses, beautiful, they have a lot of stuff, but they're not wealthy. Because most people don't want to become wealthy. They just want to have stuff, which means more, more debt, more pressure. Long story short, this is, I was 26 years old when I started. By the time I was 33, I saved enough money that the interest on it paid all my expenses for the rest of my life if I never worked ever again. So I kind of already tired. <laughs> there you go. But then you said you actually worked 10 times harder. <laughs> yeah, because you did a lot of different stuff. We have a, a foundation with another friend of mine named Jeff. He started it. I always wanted to be part of it. So right now we build basically one uh, we call the Child Prosperity Center. So we go to third world countries. Why third world countries? Because that's where we can afford it right now, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we can, with 350,000, we can build the whole center. So we go, uh, we basically build a little mini school and an orphanage and a hospital all in the same place. Oh, and nice. some of them, we have a church also in there. And um, we teach these kids about entrepreneurships and leadership. So we really believe we can make a difference. And ultimately, we want to be in many different countries. And it's ultimately really doing it here as well. But it just costs a lot more here. Well, Cash is one of my financial advisors. And, uh, you know, we, we became a member of the Wealth Builder family. What, what is the Wealth Builder family? So <clears throat> what happened, I got to tell you this story. So when I started my business, I quit my job too early, and that's what most people do. And uh, I struggled financially for a little bit, and everybody thought I was crazy, which that's kind of how it works as an entrepreneur. If everybody doesn't think you're crazy, then you're not doing it the right way, by the way, if you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> so, and I, I literally run out of money. I, I run out of money, and, uh, I just, and uh, this is right in the beginning, before I started into like savings and investing. And um, what happened, I, I had 2,500 bucks that month, okay? And I went to Ritz Carlton in Dana Point, which is 700 bucks a night, okay? And I went and I got two nights. And I said, this is how life is supposed to be. So I got two nights, it's kind of crazy. With I, my car, the, uh, the car I was telling you about, uh, the Toyota, I parked it like, because they don't have uh, self park, you know? Like yeah. there's only valet and I didn't want to take that. <laughs> <laughs> so I parked that like five miles away. Nice. I go in there and I wrote down my uh, perfect dream life and what do I stood for? And this, the world wealth builder came into me and, um, ba and basically stands for four things. So there's four corner stores. If you see that logo, there are four W's coming together. Mm -hmm. It's four W's actually. So the first W is wealth. It's teaching people about money, how money works and how you can attract money. Mm -hmm. Okay, number one. Number two is about entrepreneurship because I believe in entrepreneurship so much. You know, I love this country. And in this country, when it got started, what happened to 90% of people were entrepreneurs. 10% mm. work for somebody. Today's exact opposite. 10% mm. are entrepreneurs, 90% work for them. Mm. Okay, and this is crazy when people go there. If you look at I like to study empires and how empires fail. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. When you look at how empire fails, majority of the time they fail from inside, not outside. Mm-hmm. Because they start having this mentality of give me, give me kind of mentality. And, and uh, they just, you know, like who came up with the eight hour work day? Seriously, how, who, where did that even got started? That, that's not how it was in the US in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? So that was just created. So, and then all of a sudden the colleges come in and their jobs is to teach how to become an employee. Right. Like when you go to a college, what's their job? To train you to become an employee to go work for somebody eight to five. Right. So when you talk about empires failing, that's how it starts. People are becoming lazier, they don't work as much. They're, they're not passionate, they don't have a vision uh, for where they wanna go and they think they're great. You know, like a lot of people are like, we're great. Yeah, we're great, but we're not gonna stay great unless we do, we have a great vision for where we wanna go mm-hmm. and we really uh, bring more entrepreneurs together. I really believe this country needs to be saved by entrepreneurs, Absolutely. okay? Not by some politician, okay? It needs to be entrepreneurs coming together, be like, this is what we stand for and taking, going back to what we, how the country got started. So the second thing is being an entrepreneur. The third thing, is success principles that if people follow, maybe they'll have a better life. They will have a happier life, such as knowing more about leadership, knowing more about communication. You know, when you know you have you have better communication style, you can communicate to your spouse better, you're gonna have a better life. You know, I learned that you gotta communicate with each kid differently. Mm-hmm. So all of this stuff has helped people have a better life. And the last part of it is happiness. Because the ultimate purpose of life is to be happy. Amen. And happiness comes from two things. You're either growing in life, when you're growing, mm-hmm. you're happy. Or you, when you're helping others and you're make, making a difference for other people. Mm-hmm. So that's what we call the, the wealth builder. And we have this thing, say, I'm a wealth builder. So our guys, they call themselves, I'm a wealth builder. Like, I believe in this philosophy. This is, you know, so that's kind of like how, yeah, how I kind of got a, started. That's a great philosophy and a great example of your core values in practice. And practice. We just went to Andy Frisella's, uh, basically his whole operation, and one of his biggest lessons were your brand is your substance. It's not your your the way you look online. Mm-hmm. It's that substance of who you are. And we wanted magic tricks on how to be more dominant on social media, have more influence. And really, he's talking about how using your core values to in everything that you do. And um, you know, you, a lot of people are wondering, you know, how did Ed Milet? you know, build massive amounts of money, $600 million guy. And it's being a money guy and it's being a wealth builder. But more importantly, what are your biggest lessons that you've learned from Ed on how to recruit, hire and train teams? Great question. So the first thing, I remember the first time I met Ed, okay, I was in a crowd. There was probably a lot of other people there too. I don't know, probably at least a couple of thousand people in there. And I saw him speak and he just, you know, if you ever hear Ed speak the first time, like it sh- shakes your soul, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and I was just, I, I felt like there was life before, <laughs> there was life after, nice. <laughs> you know? And then uh, I was awakened, I feel like. Mm-hmm. So, and I learned on what probably, I learned so much mental stuff. And because in building a team, building an organization, is really transferring that winning belief Mm -hmm. system into people's mind. See, I'll explain it to you like this. This is pretty much the stuff that I learned. So there's two things. There's called facts Mm -hmm. and then there's called truth. Mm -hmm. So what's a fact? This is black. You Mm -hmm. see it, I see it, we agree. We we can't disagree. Mm -hmm. What's the truth? Truth are the things that you believe it to be true, therefore they're true for you. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a silly example. The iPhone is a distraction. But that also iPhone could be a massive way to grow huge influence. You got or it. You could That's use a belief. Social media to distract you. Either way. Either way. So whatever you believe, you end up seeing things that support that. So Ed talks about this all the time. So the, our beliefs are formed when you're a child. Mm-hmm. So if you're three years old, your dad comes in, says, "Hey, son, the world is flat." What do you say? Okay, Dad. You don't say no, 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 Dad. It's around. You have no clue what the heck you're talking about. So when our parents comes in and say, hey, money doesn't go on a tree, and then we're like, okay. Oh, you gotta really work hard to make money or, or all this stuff. You need to work hard, hard, do, uh, work hard, but that's not the only thing. So if you, how many people you know that work so hard and they're broke? Yeah, a lot. A lot. And that's why that movie, Think and Grow Rich, talks about how you can, basically talks about money does grow on a tree. 
<laughs> and that's straight up from the tree of life, man. It's about you know one thing I love about Ed's perspective is he, and it's one thing that's really helped me. It's I've always been good at being able to manifest opportunity, mm -hmm. um, but it's that all of our anxieties, fears, resentments, limited beliefs, all the negative things they they all pull from our purpose. And the more that we can anchor in our vision for the future, the more that we can anchor it in with just like strong emotional feelings. And one thing that Ed talks about is doing it while he's working out. And for me, I've just with Ed and Andy, it's been a it's been a big jump for me to kind of, you know, mental health, other reasons, but mm -hmm. getting more physically fit has also intensified my ability to track bigger deals, better people, more influence. So I'm gonna tell you a secret. Mm -hmm. So this is this is how Ed really built his organization, all of this stuff by this is what I was going by helping people change their belief system first. Because you can have a great, you can have people in your organization, but if they don't think they are the best mm -hmm. and they're great performers, you just got an average team. Mm -hmm. That's the secret of building any winning organization. You got to help them change their belief system. So this belief system, like I said, is formed when you're a child mm -hmm. or when you grow up, certain things happen to you. Like, have you ever seen somebody, they go into business with their family, the business goes bad, and they're like, oh. What if somebody has a belief system that growing their contracting company uh -huh. is only going to cause them more headache, that's more belief expense. system. That's, that's complete belief system stuff, mm -hmm. okay? So, and, and we all have or, the thermo, or, or there's the a lot of the guys story. that are watching this, sometimes they, they say this, they say, um, Salespeople aren't worth investing in because they start their own company, they don't work as hard as I do, and 80% of them fail. 80% mm. of them will fail mm -hmm. if you don't help them change their belief system. Because mm -hmm. you can give them a tool, but if they don't have the mental thing to be able to use it, look, here's, I wish I could write on something right now. So think about it like this. So imagine, I'm gonna draw this thing. So here's your belief systems, mm -hmm. okay? This is your person's potential. Mm -hmm. This is the actions they take, this is the result they get. So if you bring a contractor on, let's say, mm -hmm. what's their belief on their ability on what they can make money, okay? Right. Maybe the most of their life they didn't make money, now you give them this opportunity, no, but a they lot don't of times have the belief. I ask them, I'm like, How, what, if this goes perfect, what is perfect to you? And you know, they give me real conservative numbers and it's like, you're not even giving yourself a chance. So, and you see when you, the question I asked them, I said, what's the most money you ever made? Because mm -hmm. I don't care what they want. I know that what's the most money you've ever made? That tells me their money consciousness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if the most they ever made was a hundred, mm -hmm. now I want to help them make five hundred. Mm -hmm. First thing that I'm gonna challenge my challenge is they don't believe it. They're like they, they even believe it could happen, but they don't really believe it. Mm -hmm. So when they don't really believe it, they tap very little to their potential. Because we all have unlimited potential, right? Mm -hmm. God created everybody the same, unlimited potential. So they tap very little. Therefore, they take very little actions, mm -hmm. or even if they take action, they don't take it with certainty. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they get very little results, and then they say, ah, I told you this doesn't work. I tried it, I even tried this, this stuff that Lee's telling me. Mm -hmm. But if you can get into someone's mind and 100% change their belief system completely, mm -hmm. where they really believe they could do it, they are going to make a million dollars, it's just a matter of time, they take action with certainty, therefore they get a lot more result, and then they say, I told you this works. I told you. I told you. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So how do you change people's beliefs? People change their belief. They have to choose to you, change it. You do it at an event. Yeah. Uh, you have an event, coming event with John Maxwell. And I learned all of this stuff from Ed, by the way. And, and, and look, we use events to grow direct sales teams, to get better buy-in. I have a big event coming up uh, uh, in June, a boot camp, but that's one event for my one organization. Then I have another event for my, my, my basically management team and company. We're having a meeting in Orlando, sort of like a summer blast. I saw, I saw how Andy gets everybody together for the summer. Like, Man, we got to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we're going to turn it into like a quarterly meeting, but the reality, awesome. the reality is, is it's, it's a time for me to sell my vision to the team. It's, 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 it's a time for me to kind of uh, help coach them on the right belief systems mm -hmm. and, giving certainty to everybody and recognizing the winners. Now, um, you know, looking at some of this stuff on the Wealth Builder family, as soon as I get here, I notice that you have a code of honor, mm -hmm. all right? But I also notice that you, you give people a path right here to be rewarded and get recognized. That's one of the biggest lessons that I learned from Ed. 
Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about that, how you use that to drive sales. Um, so how we, so first, so let me go one step back because I'm going to tell you how we change the belief with the event, then their words come in. Okay. If they don't believe they can get it, okay. it's just all, it doesn't matter. It's just like, they're like, it sounds great. They got to believe it. And the way you do it is, I studied a lot on this because I struggled. I was able to make money and that was a whole different thing. Me making money, the whole different thing, me teaching somebody else making a half a million, mm-hmm. you know, completely different thing. So the, the people change their beliefs when they go through a life-changing event. Like, mm-hmm. have you ever seen somebody, they get into a car accident, they lose a leg, and then now they're a motivational speaker. Right. Or they're, they're overweight, they get a heart attack, um, and now they're CrossFit instructors. Like the life-changing event happens, they say, okay, enough is enough, I'm gonna change, right. okay? So we manufacture an event for them. And Tony Robbins does this. Ed is a master of it, right? Anything he does is just amazing. So what we do, we, for, there's a, the process is like this. The first, you have to break people pattern habits and take them out of their normal environment. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta take them three days someplace else. They sleep in a different place. They eat a different let me, food. Let me ask you, is your financial services guy talking to you about these type of things? Because listen, you know, the Bob Proctor mm-hmm. chant about money flowing to me all the time is just as important as learning compound interest and mm-hmm. different financial service products. And, and that's why, you know, I, I'm actually, even though I have a big event coming up right afterwards, I'm going to be traveling to your mm-hmm. event. Yeah. I'm pumped up to meet this entrepreneur community, wealth builders, and learn from everybody. It, it's, it's, it's pretty cool, bro. It's the most, the most rewarding thing ever. I'm going to read you a text right now, right after this, just to see the difference it makes for people. But you break the... So do you know what I mean when I say break pattern habits? It's kind of like... Explain what you mean. Like when you wake up, do you brush your teeth first or do you take a shower? Um, take a shower. Okay. You don't think about it, right? You just no. do it. Okay. That's called your pattern habits. Like when you take a shower, you wash the same spot. Okay, every day, and you turn the same way. It's called your pattern habits. So first, you gotta break the pattern habit, number one. Number two, you have to identify people's wrong beliefs because they don't know that that belief is wrong. Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks their belief is right. That's why there's wars. Why do, every war that gets started is because somebody believed that mm-hmm. we should go here because I was disrespected or whatever. It's some kind of a belief thing that they have on something should get done this way. Mm-hmm. And they think it's a fact, but it's not, it's a complete belief. So we, we have 140 questions we give to people. Mm-hmm. We identify their beliefs, what their beliefs are. We say, look, if you really believe, put a 10. If you completely disagree, put a, put a zero. And then we find out where, where their belief system is. Oh, nice. And then the next three days is, I call it basically positive brainwashing, okay? So we bring in the- And then you're gonna leave learning how to build wealth. Yeah, and we teach them about money because we bring in, people have all sorts of different excuses. So we bring somebody who started 18. They were, mm-hmm. they were 18, they became an entrepreneur. And now they're making millions of dollars. We bring somebody who is 60 years old. Mm-hmm. Somebody's like single mom, they're like, oh, I'm a single mom. We bring somebody who's a single mom who has five kids and now is making seven figures. And if you're watching this and you're a contractor, that's really what this is about. It's mm-hmm. about being the greatest showman to make sure, look, people, if people don't know you, they won't flow you. And if you don't let the testimonials of your business help mm-hmm. convince people's belief systems, then you never get these high performing teams. You never get this massive, like cult like following you, you. And you want to know how we have, you know, mm-hmm. so much movement in the, and, and it's because, you know, we're holding live events. We're, we're constantly selling our vision to the team. I mean, you're on meetings and trainings mm-hmm. with your teammates. You got 600 people. How do you, how do you keep everybody inspired? Well, the, we have weekly uh, meetings and things like this, but we show them. So Ed always talks about there's a difference between motivation and inspiration. Remember mm-hmm. I said like there was me before meeting him and then me after meeting mm-hmm. him. Um, so, because I got inspired. Mm-hmm. So motivation is moving people toward their motives, the car, a house, mm-hmm. something outside. Inspiration is happens inside of you where mm-hmm. you start crying and you go in there like, wow, like you feel like you feel the spirit and you're like, wow, I just felt something. And, mm-hmm. and that's inspiration and that helps them move forever. Mm-hmm. So, that, so in this event, that's what we do. So there's, and there's a science. Ed always talks about, Tony talks about this, there's six human needs. Yeah, I okay? love this part. It's, I, I incorporated some of this in my book. 
it's it's and in every behavior, if somebody's addicted to it that mm-hmm. they cannot change, is because they're meeting three of their primary needs. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you like, for example, if somebody's smoking and they want to stop smoking, if they're meeting these three needs, it's impossible for them to stop it by just sheer uh, of will. Like I'm gonna do it. For example, if you're smoking, it makes you feel certain. So you know, you you go out, you you, you smoke and. You get the nicotine and it makes you feel a certain way. You're certain that you're gonna get that feeling every time where you smoke, so that's certainty. Now, you, every time you wanna smoke, let's say you go outside to smoke, you're changing your environment, you have some variety, okay? That's uncertainty. Now, imagine if you go and smoke with your friends. Now you're connecting with friends also. Mm-hmm. Now you're getting love and connection. So now you got three needs. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be very hard for people. So like Bob Proctor talks about, it's a paradigm shift. So when people come to this event, we change them how to change those paradigms. Mm-hmm. And how do you change it? What do you leverage? So, and these are all the stuff obviously I learned from- John's uh, recent podcast with Ed was one of the best podcasts. I highly recommend anybody go check that podcast how good out. Was that? Dude, it was fire. And it made me really excited about coming to see John at your event. Yeah. And if any of y'all contractors are in Arizona or want to meet me in Arizona, uh, it's going to be like uh, June, what is it's, it? It's June 24th, 25th, 26th. Uh-huh. Uh, of uh, June, uh-huh. and uh, it's three days. All we have John Maxwell, obviously one of the greatest. He written over a hundred books, right? On leadership, is coach president. Uh, yeah, this is like an exclusive team for mm-hmm. Cash's family, and we want to invite anybody that follows me. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, if you just comment below on this YouTube or reach out to me through social media, I'll get you information. Yeah. Um, the, most of the time, these these events are big money. And, and you don't spend yeah. big money. Yeah. But, but you don't, you don't, we don't charge, make money from this. You don't event. charge yeah, big money. We don't, we, yeah. It's literally a couple hundred bucks because mm-hmm. it's, we don't make money from it. It just it pays their food, mm-hmm. basically, <laughs> their dinner. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, just some of these speakers, like, you know, there's just $95,000 just for one speaker to come speak. And, yeah, and I, you know, I'll we tell don't you, make money from that. We make just, money from our agents changing their belief system and then they go make money. And that's kind of how we get rewarded. Well, the biggest thing that I love about what you brought to me and my wife was, you know, with upcoming changes in administration, with as I mm-hmm. earn more and more and more, my biggest liability is, you know, my tax liabilities. Mm-hmm. And so I invest in multifamily real estate and I get depreciation. But there's there's some I had some holes in my financial uh, game plan, some real big holes that I'm almost like, I can't believe I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. But, you know. I think that what people have to understand was I was paying unnecessary money in taxes. I wasn't making the most money with all the money that I had. And now I have a way to not only multiply my money, but avoid paying Mm -hmm. money to taxes that I knew I had to pay. And that is such a, makes such a big difference. I'll give you an example. If you have a hundred grand, okay. Mm -hmm. And you're investing that a hundred grand and you get 10% on that money over 30 years period of time, that one time hundred thousand becomes 1.7 something million. Okay, mm-hmm. just take any compound interest calculator, it will show you. Now, if you have to stop each year and pay 20% in taxes, that means instead of 10, you got 8%. So instead of 1.7, you end up with 1 million. So that's $700,000 less because why? Because you have to pay 20% in taxes every single year. Mm-hmm. So taxes are the biggest killer of wealth. Mm. So we show people how to legally avoid paying those taxes. Hey, look, guys, uh, you, you know, the thing is, is that if, if you don't want to unnecessarily, look, they're printing money, they're, they're, the American dream's under attack. I mean, talk about all the different things that are taking over our world and our censorship and what's being shoved down our throats. Look, if you want to protect your business, your family, your way of life, you owe it to yourself just to pay attention. Mm-hmm. And you have a course that you built. Yeah. And we, we, we were talking one night and you created uh, an, an online university. Yeah. It's, a, it's a basically a course that people can come in, learn about money, which is the crazy part of it is a lot of, okay, let me back up and I'll, because it's a free course. Look, and if I'll you want you, access to the course too, I'll, I'll get you free access yeah. to the course. Just comment below. Because let, let me tell you the problem with the industry. Once I got into it, I said, wow, this is a pretty messed up industry. Why? Because- the financial services industry is driven by quota, okay, period. So I tell people this. So first of all, when somebody tells me I have a financial advisor, I'm like, okay, we need to talk. 
okay? Because that can help you. But because here's the thing. I tell people My, this. The accountant's always saying, oh, you can't write that off or you can't do this or you can't do that. Let me or, tell you why. Because financial services industry is driven by quota. Like if, if somebody tells me who their advisor is, what company they're with, mm -hmm. I'll tell you exactly what product they have. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. If somebody is with Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, Edward Jones, Wells Fargo advisor, Merrill Lynch, these guys' quota is based on money under management. They charge 1% of the assets and they manage the money, okay? So they say that's the best thing. So these guys are like, that's how they make their money. So they always talk crap about, for example, annuities or life insurance or any of these kind of things, okay? Why? Because that's their main that's how they make their money. That's that 1%. If I put that money into an annuity, I might get a lump sum in the, in the beginning, but I'm not making that 1% forever. Mm -hmm. And these guys are in the game of, let me just put a lot of money in there and get that 1%. It's just easy. Once I gather it, I just sit back and just trade it for a little bit and then we're good, right? So that's their model, okay? Mm -hmm. The other guys are companies like Mass Mutual, Wuthel and Reed or I'm literally naming these right here, but there's, uh, let's see, uh, New York Life, uh, Northwest. Northwestern, MetLife. So these guys, their quota is based on whole life policies mm -hmm. and annuities. So they're like, whole life is the best thing. You know, you no, got no, no, to have no. a whole life. They tried to pitch me on that. I was uh, just about right. to get the ink on the deal. <laughs> Thank God so, you saved me. So, so there's that. And then there's guys that... Yeah, they're, uh, we call them the termites. You know, they got the, mm -hmm. the, the, the people that are like, oh, you just gotta buy the term and, and invest the difference, right? That's, that, that's the best thing, right? So there's like Primericas, there's, uh, for example, Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey, you know, Dave Ramsey just basically, just they, they go to churches and they just give the message, some message to the masses that just get out of debt, get out of debt and buy term insurance policy. And then you got the fourth category of people, which is independent advisors, okay? Like LPL or AXA or TFA. So these are like uh, independent advisors. Now, in, independent advisors can do either one of one those other categories. But which one do they do? It really depends on what philosophy they grew up in, mm -hmm. okay? It's kind of like religion. Like 90% of the religions in the world are based on where you were born. Mm -hmm. And everybody says, mine's right, yours is wrong. Well, the big thing I like <laughs> about cash is he put me in a rich man's Roth, and we won't give you too much details about that, but it did save me a ton of money, and he will get you hooked up. Yeah. More importantly, um, you know, it's putting yourself around people that are saving the kind of money that mm -hmm. cash is saving that puts the pressure on me to save more money, which sometimes you just need friends to put pressure on you to save more money like a competition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, um, you know, it's I'm, I'm really pumped. Um, you know, I really want to ask you, though, about, like, what do you think about the future? I mean, can we, our crypto just had a crash, mm -hmm. real estate's going through the roof. You know, what are we looking at potentially for, for mm -hmm. a market? And, and, and what, what, what can so, people do to, to, to protect their assets? I'm going to get there. Let me answer your first question when you asked me about the crashes. I want to tell you why we offer those courses for free, mm -hmm. okay? Because we found out nobody does it, mm -hmm. okay? So the idea is, like, for example, in plumbing, the best idea would be to show people why they don't need a plumber. Right. Okay. You'd be like, hey, you, you do this, 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 this. Now, when you teach them everything, they're still not going to do it. They want you to do it. So they come to you. So it's the same thing on the money area. So we believe nobody's going to care about your money more than you do. Not me, not anybody else. But we're going to give you resources for you to learn. Just a bit. And, and the financial industry makes it this complicated thing. Like, Oh my goodness, I went to Yale. It means nothing, okay? I, I'm dead serious. I used to be intimidated by all these guys that were like 30 years older than me. They had the gray hair. They would speak the big lingo. And I'm like, what the heck did this judge guy say? And he had a three-piece suit on. And I'm like, oh my God, this guy. And I'm like, just common sense, man. It, so when you see this education, it's just so common sense. I'm like, I don't care how many degrees you get me. If you're charging me this much, and I'm not outperforming the market, why am I paying you? <laughs> right? I don't need 20 degrees to, to see that I'm paying you this much and I'm not even outperforming the market, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so the, what I was trying to tell you is the reason we do those courses for free, and always everybody always like criticizes us for offering it for free because anything you do for free, people think, you know, you're trying to sell them something or whatever. But if you 
charge somebody a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks to come learn it. They're like, oh my God, this was the best thing. You know, but we still believe in that this education should be available for everybody. So we give the education to people and if they want to know more, they just let us know. You see what I'm saying? We just do we just do education and eventually they come to us because we were the one who taught them. So that's kind of like the philosophy on that. Guys, one. if you want access to the Wealth Builder training, the online academy, look, just type in Wealth Builder below in the comments, we'll get you access. And uh, now to go to the next thing, the, the question that you talked, uh, as far as the, the crypto and, and uh, uh, the stock market, the real estate market. Um, Are we in a bubble? So first of all, it's very hard for me to talk about it because of my licenses, mm -hmm. okay? So I prefer not going there. But <laughs> I kind of want to go in there. <laughs> go so, in there as much as you can. <laughs> so, um, and, the, and these things uh, could change. Now, let's just talk about real estate, for, a sec for example. Re you always make your money in real estate when you buy, okay? So if you find a good deal, I don't care, if, like let's say the guy needs to leave the country and da da da, da and there's a specific circumstances, you get a good deal, it's always a good time to buy, yeah. okay? Because it's a good deal, okay? Now, if you wanna buy real estate and keep it for 30 years from now, it's always a good deal also. Now, we're talking about if you wanna buy real estate and sell it five years from now, that's a whole different game because Federal Reserve obviously brought the interest rates so low Therefore, you cut, they raise the, you raise the price of all the houses, okay? Now, the interest rate cannot stay low forever. So at some point, something needs to happen to the interest rate. Who knows when? They said they're gonna keep it low for the next two, three years, but who knows, okay? But the moment there's a, adjustments on the interest rate, what's gonna happen to the price of the houses? So because people are not gonna be able to, because people don't buy a house based on- They buy payments. They buy payments. Okay, so once they can't afford the payments. How many people are behind on their payments? Oh my goodness. You know, one of our buddies in, uh, uh, in the Arete, he was just showing me the list of all the people. Delinquent? Yeah, that are, that are his, delinquent. Th th he's a mortgage guy? He's, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a, uh, it's crazy. He's a real estate guy and he goes and basically buys those properties. Mm. So if you know things like this, hey, great time to buy, you know? Right. But it's, it, Rule of thumb is always this. And Warren Buffett said it. I didn't say it, but nobody follows it. When everybody's greedy, be scared. Mm -hmm. When everybody's scared, be greedy. Mm -hmm. You know when Corona happened? Everybody's freaking out. I was partying. Every, because I just knew it. Every single day I was jumping out 10 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand into the market. <laughs> when it was going like this. Nice. And I made a ton of money last year because everybody was scared. Nice. Then when everybody was like part and everyone was like, oh yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, let's get out, let's get out. <laughs> so it's just, just follow that common rule. Just look at it. If your neighbor's doing it, you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> that's right. So, so there that's, you go. You could just apply that rule of thumb to really everything. Everything. Well, um, so as we got into this, we, we covered a lot of freaking content. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing that, that I got as a takeaway is, you know, if you want to create a mass movement in your business, follow Ed's principles. And if you want to build wealth, a guy like Ed, who really, when you get to know him, you know, Ed will tell you, like, he has some amazing people skills. He is an amazing communicator. But, you know, I'm not the smartest IQ guy in the world, mm -hmm. you know, but... I think it's really, really inspiring to see a guy like Ed go from where he's at to worth $600 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like, okay, well, let me follow a little every step he did. And that's what really led me down the path. And I'm so grateful to get mm -hmm. together with you, man. And um, I'm pumped up about helping uh, contractors too, because it's not just about you know mm -hmm. uh, making the money. It's about uh, figuring a way to build real freedom and getting, er getting everybody out of this slavery from the ruling class. I mean, it's just not right that these same banks won't give you money to grow their business, but they'll give you debt to, to, to buy your, a boat, boat. Or, 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 what, or a truck. I mean, a truck does make you money to some extent, but the problem is, is that, you know, there's just too much cash that goes through contractors' hands. They don't have the right protections if something goes wrong. A lot of them don't have the right insurance, even on their own workers, much less their own life. 
And, you know, it's just funny. I was a risky roofer and a risky contractor, and I've been risky in pretty much everything I've done up to this point at 35 years old. And if I would have had your um, just aggressive investing mentality, mm-hmm. dude, the amount of money I'd be making passively right now is just like it would, it would, you know. And so it's one of those things where, dude, it's never too late. It's time to start now. And that's why I joined the Wealth Builder family. And I encourage anybody watching this to connect with Cash. How can they get a hold of you on Instagram? So it's Cash Rastan, Cash with a K. So K A S H R A S T A N. Instagram is quite honestly the best way to uh, send me a message, DM me, um, Perfect. and I'll get back to them. And and I got to say this, you know, to, to your guys. And so, because I want to talk about this a li- just for a second, because if, again, if, if somebody knew me 10 years ago, I was a complete different person. I'm telling you, I was shy. I had zero confidence. I never thought I was good enough. And I know so many people feel that way. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and I remember hearing this and someone told me, he says, look, if I talk to you the way you talk to yourself, would we be friends? Mm. When you're looking at the mirror, when you're looking at yourself and you're saying all this stuff you're saying to yourself, are we going to be friends? Mm. And, and the answer for me was like, nope. Nope. And the answer is like, nope. I'm too hard on myself. I'm too hard. I'm just seeing the flaws, seeing all of this stuff, thinking not good enough. And, and I'm just telling you, in this country, we truly have the greatest opportunity in the whole world. I don't care where you at. We have people like you that's willing to coach people, people like me. There's so many, at so many of these people that just want to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And the person just needs to be hungry and not worry about what other people say about them. Mm. I'm telling you, if somebody's not saying something about you, you ain't doing it right. You ain't doing it right. You ain't doing it right. So, 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 uh, what, are the, what, what about the first haters that came along in your world? What, what, what was your response? You know, I, I never worried about the hate because, you know, once I understood, the only people that hate on you are the people who are behind you. Mm. Okay. The people in front of you do not hate. The people in front of you never behind, never hate you until you pass them, and then they can hate you. So, <laughs> but haters always come from. So the more haters you have, the better it is. And I just really never looked at it that way because I just loved people, and I just I just knew they didn't know. Once yeah. I knew, I was like, they didn't know. Mm-hmm. So then my mission became like, I want to help them so they know. Right. That's why we do these events and things like this. You know, if I. Um, you know, I, I literally wanted to dedicate, seriously, the rest of my life to helping people change their belief systems, their mindset. You know, I just read you this text that my buddy just sent it to me because he went to one of these and, and he's doing pretty well. He's over half a million now. And he's like, I just wanted to say that I'm grateful for your life. I really appreciate you, my brother, and I'm extremely blessed to have you in my life. I know I'm the center, uh, I am in the center of God's will, and he, and he used you to bless me and my family. Thank you for everything that you've done and do. Thank you for all the belief and the opportunity that you gave me. I never take it for granted, and I always give my all. So that, it gets me emotional even right now that I'm reading it. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think that's what, you tell me what life's when about. When you've got 600 you, guys on your team. I tell you, that's what life is about. When that's you what it's can about. make a difference in somebody else's life. And I, I, you know, that my thing is, I don't care if they're in my team or if they're not in my team. Okay, because that's, that's, I believe that's my purpose in, in life, to be able to help people become a wealth builder. Mm-hmm. And somebody did for me. I never had a mentor. I never had a mentor that was in business. So I said, you know what? Somebody did it for me. Sean, Michael, Ed, all these guys did it for me. I'm going to do it for other people. Oh, nice. And that's where I get the most gratitude. Heck yeah, buddy. You know. Well, guys, you got to take him up on his offer. Get his free online course. Um, we covered a lot of content here, and I want to get. I want you to get connected with Cash. I'm going to be at the event, the Wealth Builder event in Arizona. Anybody wants to join me, feel free to come. I'm bringing my wife. It's a it's a husband and wife thing, planning financial freedom. I'm going to be having her on an upcoming podcast. Um, it's a family environment. We got. Um it's like one of the big water parks there. Oh, nice. So the families can have water park. And, All right, cool, yeah. man. Well, I appreciate you coming in here, bro. For sure. And I know that the Thanks guys' lives were changed that were watching this, and uh, um, we're, uh, we got some big things coming for y'all, so y'all stay tuned. Fired up.